Hello brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode here on Dangerous African Confessions HD. In this episode, we have a story from one of our brothers, who reveals or confesses to us how his wife died as a pastor. And immediately after the death of his wife, he became so much powerful and famous. Now, this is one sad confession from our brother. Sometimes, we do allow ourselves to be deceived into things that turn to destroy us. And even our loved ones who are innocent and knows nothing about what we embark on. That is exactly what happened in this confession where our brother shares with us about how he became so much powerful after the deal he made with the devil. Even though he was a pastor and father, he decided to pursue this evil journey of attaining power and fame, which resulted into the death of his wife. Our brother says that, he wants to use his bitter and sad story as an advisory tool for our fellow brothers and sisters out there who might be thinking of going this route that he took. He reveals to us some of the evil things that goes on behind the pulpit and also in the dark places, between pastors of this generation. Without taking much of your time, let us go and listen to her story. Don't forget to please subscribe, share and like our videos. Kindly hit the notification bell so you will be the first to get notification to our videos when we upload. Hello my brothers and sisters, before I talk about what I have been through and done, I would like to first of all ask for your forgiveness. My reason for asking for your forgiveness is because, I have come to know that, we are all one body and a part of the Creator, and so, whatever I do to one person, affects the whole human existence. I am ready to make amends for all the wrong things that I have done. And me sharing my story with you all is the beginning of my journey. I have been praying that, my wife wherever she is at this point in time, if only she can see me, will forgive me for all the evil things I have done to her. I know it will not be a one-day thing, but I pray I am able to find the strength to carry this cross. I am talking to you at this time with a different name because of the fear for my own life. So, for the sake of this confession, any name I will give, understand that I have changed the name. I am a man in my early forties. And I happen to be a founder and a head pastor of one of the biggest church in the capital city. On every Sunday, the church do sit not less than 3,000 people. We do have three services every Sunday. As I do write to you about my story, I have given my only beautiful daughter to my mother. I had to lie to my mother that I was traveling and her granddaughter had to come and stay with her till I return. What I am going through, is very difficult for me to bear it all. But I have decided to endure everything and every punishment I have to go through. I started my whole life as someone who had been with my mother. Because my father died when I was young. My mother had to raise me all by herself, and because of that, I made a promise that I was going to make her proud. After some time, things were not really going on well for my mother. And so, the church that we used to go when I was growing up, the head pastor took me in and took care of my needs like his own son, thereby taking my burden from my mother. So, most of my life when growing up, I spent it in the mission house. So, I became even more religious than I used to be. My life was all about serving the pastor and doing what was expected of me at the church. That's how I grew up. When I was around my early thirties, there was this lady in the church that I fell in love with. And I told my pastor who was then more than my father about the lady. Fast forward, everything was done and this beautiful lady became my wife. By this time, I had some small business aside the church that I was doing. And so, marrying wasn't something that was out of the question for me. She became my wife and we moved in together in our own apartment and started life of our own. She was working in the banking sector and had been my support throughout our marriage. In fact, had it not been her, I do know for sure that there was no way that I could have gotten through with whatever I did. Her encouragement and even support in terms of money was something I can never write off. One thing I didn't say earlier was that, I started Bible school before I met my wife. This was after the pastor has told me about the calling of God on my life. And I have on several occasions dreamt about it. So, when I finished the theology school, I still was a part of his church until about some time, that I felt the need to start my own church. This was something my mother didn't like the idea, but the pastor told her to allow me also go and start the ministry if I say it was God that was telling me to. And so, 
My mother finally agreed but with a condition that I would remain close to the pastor and still call on him anytime I had any issue. Thinking back now, I wish I did everything my mother had told me. In life, I have learned the hard way that, God uses different people to talk to you in different ways that you might not even expect. But with me, I didn't listen to the very talk that the Lord was talking to me. So, after some time in the ministry and my marriage as well, in life you will always meet different people in any chosen field of your life. That is exactly what happened. Even though this person that I am going to talk about was not entirely a new person, we were reuniting after a long time. This person happened to be an old schoolmate way back from the secondary school days. And he was also now a prophet who had his own church and was doing well with ministry. One thing is that, during this time that I met this old school friend, my ministry was not all vibrant and was not on its feet like one would wish for his ministry to be. But on the other hand, my friend was doing so well with ministry. He was commanding numbers and had the following on social media and every space that one can think of as a pastor. He was bringing these top men of the faith into his church for programs. Sometimes, I get invited to the program, and others too, I do watch his programs on social media. But then, it got to a time after my wife had given birth that, she started telling me to distance myself from my friend. But honestly I didn't mind her because, I didn't see the need to let go of someone who has made it and could show me the things that were necessary to help me gain. Grounds and move the church forward. I should have also listened to my wife. But then, there is no way one can savage a spilled milk. He started inviting me to meetings with other pastors who are his friends. And I also began to know some of these people who go about preaching on TV. To the extent that, one even invited me to minister in his church. After that ministration, he gave me an envelope as a sign of thanksgiving. When I opened the envelope later when I got home, I couldn't believe the amount that was inside the envelope. So, people are really enjoying these sums of monies by just mounting the pulpits of other pastors. So, I started imagining how some of the top pastors who go about preaching in other churches regularly are making. After some time, my friend asked me about the growth of my church. And after our conversation, he told me he can help gain ground and also move like the others are doing. I didn't think any bad into what he told me. And so, I told him to go ahead with whatever he would do to help me push my church also to the level I was seeing his friends. So, he one day called me and told me that, if I was willing, he wanted us to go and visit his spiritual father, through whom he has been able to do all the things that he has achieved. And just like that, I also agreed and we went together to this place. The man had this nice house with a very beautiful compound that complemented the building very well. When we reached the inside of the building, he welcomed us and we had a very lengthy and beautiful conversation. There was nothing unusual about him that I could have said because of this I was no longer going to stay. He made me to appreciate the need for me to go through series of directions and rituals, which he did give quotations in the Bible to back his statements. He told me that, I was to go through three days purification, which will enable me to attract the face of the angel we will be calling. I asked why angel. And he told me that, for everybody to have a strong church or ministry, there should be an angel that will guide or protect the pastor and the ministry as a whole. And when that happens he said, now the other directions that will be done will enable the atmosphere to push for the pastor's name out there so strongly. He honestly told me everything that there was for him to tell me. So, I went back and then did my three days fasting and after going through with the fasting, we returned to him for the commencement of the necessary steps towards whatever he explained to me. My goal in this mission was to attract power and be known out there for the church to grow. That was all that I was looking for. To tell you the truth, I didn't need to go through any of these things. Because, my wife was working and was supporting me in every step of the way and I did have my small business that I used to do also running. So, the little that we could do, we were doing it. But then, I guess see my friend and his people with the kind of life that they were living. It pushed me into doing things that I didn't think twice about. This very same thing that I didn't think through with it, is what has brought me these whole problems in my life. Like I always say, these are not just stories for story's sake. 
they are meant for us not to make these mistakes our brothers and sisters are making. That's why we share these stories with you. After listening to this story, I will say that, there's something that it seems to be common amongst most of the stories that we are hearing. Let us please be mindful of the kind of friends that we associate ourselves with. It is more like, they always get into these things through the influence of friends, and the kind of life that seems to always attract their attention. I honestly wish the youth of these days will understand what I am talking about. And do listen to some of the important lessons in these stories that we share. Money, fame and power are important in human life, yes, it is true that we cannot do without it. But please, we should understand that money and all those things are not the only means to an end. I honestly think that, this generation are really becoming a generation that if we do not sit up and really get to understand the living spirit of Christ, we will be heading for a doom. Why do you start a church and say that God has called you to do His work? And end up in seeking for powers from a different source rather the one that sent or called you? You see, the devil has many of his people pretending to be the very select of God, all in an attempt to deceive many unto himself. Let us be wise and vigilant in our walk in the faith. I just hope that we honestly take the important lessons from these stories to better our lives and decisions. When you listen to his story carefully, you realize that he had a very solid foundation from his parents, which should have been his guidebook in his walk with the Lord. I pray that we learn from some of these stories and live a better life. If not for anything at all, it pays to live a decent and better life. Stay blessed and be safe. Thanks for being a part of this growing family. Kindly share your thought with us in the comment section below. And if you are new here, please subscribe, like and share.